I had Seven Rings by Ariana Grande playing when I fell asleep last night, and then when I woke up, my hair just looked like this, so. Today I'm gonna to be talking about lip glosses, but before I do that, I have a little bit of housekeeping corner to do. I wrote all of my talking points on my forearm, so let's just go right down the list. Number one, this video is going to contain my thoughts and opinions about a product that I received in PR by Grande Cosmetics via Octoly. Thank you, Grande, and thank you, Octoly. Is she going to be honest about those products? Yes. Does every YouTuber say that? Yes. Will she roast if roasting is necessary? Of course she will. My oven is preheated. Thing two, my no-buy. I am currently on a no-buy. I was on one from about October 20th until Christmas. I rescinded it and bought a couple of things, and now it is back on until my birthday, which is March 16th. It's going pretty well. I was tempted by this new Wet n Wild pump collection where everything has this sort of like 80s packaging. And actually I was in my local CVS a couple days ago buying some glue so I could make slime. I looked at it and I was like, mm -hmm, should I buy something and just not tell my subscribers? Like a lady's allowed to have at least one secret. Shh. Uh -huh. And honestly, the packaging on the actual items in the collection that I would use if I bought them, like the lip balms or the cheek sticks or the like the little cooling spray, weren't that much fun. So I I just let it go and I didn't buy anything and I'm not going to and I'm strong and I deserve praise for that. Thing three, yesterday I uploaded the long awaited part two to my Tumblr deep dive video in which I'm looking at some of the cringy videos that I posted on Tumblr when I was a teenager and a drunk college student, but it has copyrighted music in it. So I don't think YouTube promoted it as much as they would normally um, because it's not doing amazing views wise. <laughs> so if you didn't get notified about that video or you didn't know I put it up or what whatevsies, take a look at it. I think it's fun. I worked hard on it. I like it. On to the meat of this video. Except not really. I'm trying to become a vegetarian. So on to the Satan of this video. Now, a couple months ago, and by a couple months I mean a year ago, I made a video called The Gospel According to Nisi Pisa. Sorry, I paused filming to accessorize. Um, but a year ago, I made a video called The Gospel According to Nisi Pisa, colon, eyeliner. In that video, it's about 11 minutes of me outlining all of my thoughts and opinions about eyeliner. I outline brands I like, types I like, brush tips I like. And for a while, I've wanted to do a similar video about my other favorite type of product to buy, which is lip gloss. I love lip gloss. It's my cosmetic kryptonite. So why don't I start with the Grande Lips Glosses and maybe definitely pluck my lip hair a little bit. I'll be right back, children. Hello again, it's me, Walmart Shea Mitchell. I didn't end up plucking my lip hair because all of my Armenian ancestors appeared before me and reminded me of the old country and how many women lived and died for me to have these lip hairs. So they're here and they're not going anywhere. This is a trio of plumping lip glosses that I was gifted from Grande Cosmetics. These tubes are metal and they make a really fun, satisfying noise when you caress them together. Just gonna go down the line. This one at first is a brown tone pink nude called Spicy Mauve. Now you may be wondering, why did I wanna get this little box? Well, I love plumping glasses. I got a weird fetish for them. These ones have a fun little clicking mechanism that when you first buy it, you gotta click up about 60 consecutive times, and it comes through this little hypodermic needle looking rubbery applicator, which is really satisfying to apply to your lip. Now, I was certain these shades would be too light for me. They're sheer enough to be wearable by themselves, which I really appreciate. My favorite types of glosses are glosses that are thick enough to be worn by themselves without a balm underneath them, but not so thick that it feels like I have a hatching chrysalis on my lips. So this is a good middle ground. I also prefer glosses that have no sparkle in them. I like a glassy sheen and these ones do that for me. The tingle of these is where I find them to be kind of lacking. That's mostly because they don't hurt. I want a gloss to hurt me a little bit. When if I'm gonna wear a plumper, I want it to, I want it to injure me. The burn means it's working. Listerine taught me that. These have a slight tingle to them. It's kind of just like a bunch of bees are flying near your lips rather than violently stinging them in just a suicidal rush, which is more of what I prefer. I've actually been wearing this. I've been keeping this one in my purse this week. This is our good sis Spicy Moth. I'm genuinely impressed with how flattering and wearable this is on my lips by itself. But I find these to be really, really comfortable. If you got like $27 to bust, 
I'd recommend these. I was planning on purchasing the clear one before I saw these on Octoly. In fact, it was in my Sephora loves for about a month. And the reason I never pulled the trigger on it is because I was still panning my Too Faced Lip Injection Gloss that I'm gonna show you right after this. These glosses also claim to add a lasting plumping effect to your lips with continued consistent use. Although I switch up my lip glosses so frequently that I wouldn't ever use it in that capacity. I have been carrying that one around in my little baggie of glosses in my purse, but I also have about four other lip glosses in there. So this next one is a coral adjacent shade that is called Sunbaked Sedona. It's bright and fun and happy and I'm a fan. Oh, oh, oh God, a cotter. She tried to jump. This is much more of a classic pink gloss. I almost never go for colors like this. I have a wet and wild nude called Give Me Mocha and this on top of that is a really fun, poppy, comfortable combo. This definitely pulls more of like a cooler tone candy pink on me. And honestly, it's such an untouched color range for me that I'm okay with it. It's a fun little experiment for me and my mouth. And last up, we have our good sis, Clear. The clicker does get jammed a little bit on this one specifically. I just give her a good little yoink, and that usually fixes a problem. See, there she is. This one has the most shine out of the trio because there is no pigment to dull the shine. So that was my trio of grande lips, lip plumping glosses. I like these. I'm gonna continue wearing them on a semi-regular basis. I don't think click applicators are ever totally necessary. Now I'm probably not supposed to talk about a competitor product, but whatever, we're done with that portion of the video. This is the Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme Gloss. This is the painful stuff, all right? You really shouldn't put it just on your naked lips, but I do it uh, because I am a Spartan warrior. I did a project on ancient Sparta in sixth grade that taught me the warrior's code. And I, I'm ready for whatever pain this gloss brings to me. This also has a delayed tingle, but it's a much shorter delay. And this doesn't have a tingle as much as it has a burn. I did once look up the ingredients to this gloss. It very much does have capsicum in it, which is the chemical that makes peppers spicy. I love this because this gloss kind of smells like Red Bull and it's very shiny. And once the burn dies down, it's just a comfortable clear gloss because I live on the edge of glory. I have used this instead of lip balm while at work before because I like to look shiny at all times. I very much do. This gloss is $1 more expensive than the Grande Lips Gloss. So if you are super new to lip plumpers and you don't want something that's going to actively hurt you, you should probably do Grande over Too Faced because it's much more subtle and it's $1 less expensive. Pay no attention to the lace on my forehead. I'm gonna be super annoying just now and not just talk about the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Glaze, but also the Glossier Clear Gloss. Yes, I have both. Yes, I live with regret every day. We exist. This is the Milk Kush Lip Glaze. It has the loveliest packaging in the world. It has a shade name, even though there's only one. It's called like, I don't know, Alligators, or Big Nugs, or... I don't, <laughs> smonk weed, I don't know what it's called. The technical shade name of this is chronic. <laughs> that feel, that, that feel when you smonk weed. As you can see, homegirl comes out green. It has this stupid curved metal applicator that doesn't make it easy to apply at all. And in fact, what it does do is get a whole bunch of gloss all over the applicator, all the time, which is great. This is so silly. She is thick, and that's what I like. Thick, shiny, clear, really comfortable, vaguely minty, and that sort of like artisanal mint taste that sort of tastes like mint and beeswax. As goofy as this gloss is from a conceptual and financial standpoint, because it's $18, yes, I hate myself, you don't have to ask. I do like it and I do wear it. I do have to say though, it does not taste good. And as less of that pure mint taste and you can sort of taste a sort of like chemically like sort of taste. I don't like that quite as much. Ew, ew, yeah, this tastes gross. <laughs> Yuck, okay. The Glossier gloss is, all right. Do I regret buying this gloss? No, I love it. And that's where the pain is. It's such a small little bottle. It was $14. I know that this is stupid, okay? It's a clear gloss, it was $14. I'm aware that I could get this from like Cover Girl and it would be, I don't know, like 12 cents. I know I could just get like a $2.99 clear black radiance gloss. Did I fall for the packaging a little bit? Look, okay? I'm a weak millennial 
The packaging is very cute. I'm sorry, but also it's a great gloss. Thick with no sparkle, which is exactly what I like. vague sweet taste to it. What is it called? It's like my vanilla crystals lip smackers gloss with the translucent blue cap. I'll insert a picture if I can find it. It was clipped to my backpack in fifth grade and I would wear it every single day. It reminds me of that, which I'm such a freak for the mid-2000s. You know I love stuff like that. I wear it by itself a lot. I don't layer gloss on top of lipsticks as much as I keep talking like I do. I know that's what a lot of people do do with lip gloss. I prefer to wear lip gloss by itself and lipstick by itself. I don't like a dark lip color that's super, super glossy. If you put too much lip gloss on top of an already dry layer of liquid lipstick, that's just like having a full layer cake starring Daniel Craig on your lips. Wow, what an obscure, what? Yeah, that's a huge overlapping audience. People who've seen Layer Cake with Daniel Craig and people who watch your makeup videos. I've been watching too many Watch Mojo videos, I swear to God. You put on one and then six hours go by and you're like, yeah, I would like to know the biggest Oscar snubs of 1965. Thank you, what culture? Like, I'm, <coughs> how many brain cells? Zero says, I love the Glossier gloss. Will I repurchase it when I run out? Goddamn probably, and here's why. My favorite clear gloss of all time is the one that I'm about to show you. This is the Tarte Lip Surgeon's Energy Gloss. This is one of those skin intuitive lip intuitive vaguely color changing glosses that adjust to like a perfect pink when they're on your lips because of like heat signatures and pheromones. It's thick, no sparkle, fun little sort of like hourglass shaped paddle applicator. This is my favorite shape for lip gloss application and the Glossier one has the same shape. So there's already a fun thing there. I'm not gonna talk about it for too long because you can't get this anymore. But man, I took this camping with me in like May and I just kept it in the pocket of my leggings because I'm an athleisure binge. And when I was like in the woods and I just needed like a little bit of hydration on my lips, Swipe of this, I was using this instead of lip balm. And I loved it, and I looked cute in all of our pictures. Becca makes a gloss like this that isn't quite as thick. It has more of like a dimethicone texture, which is something I super don't like. I do not like when lip glosses are thinner and have more of a slippery texture. I need a little bit of that classic stick, you know? That's the entire reason I don't wear lip oils, because I don't like that slickness. I don't like that slide. Do you ever overthink something to the point where you can only explain it to yourself because only you know the nonsense words that your other self uses? like lip balms are something that I am a bit of a purist about. The lip balm that I put on every night before I go to sleepy town and every morning when I get out of the shower is the Jack Black Intense Therapy Lip Balm in the natural mint and shea butter flavor. I will not buy another lip balm. I won't even buy a different flavor of this one. Very restorative to the lips. $7.50, what's not to love? If you're noticing my lights flickering at all, I'm so sorry about that. I do believe that my downstairs neighbors are in fact performing an exorcism right now. So like, <laughs> what are you gonna do? It's Tuesday. Here is the shining star of the milk products. This is the Milk Kush Lip Balm. This shade is called Green Dragon for no reason. It is in fact a magnet. Oh yeah. This lip balm is green. I've used it about halfway because <laughs> I wear it. This is the lip balm that I bring to work with me. This has that same artisanal mint and beeswax taste as the Kush Glaze, but it doesn't taste like being poisoned. It's thin, but still moisturizing. It's great layering under uncomfortable lip products that are too drying. I love this. It's $14, which is goofily expensive for a lip balm. It's like twice the size of the Jack Black, but I don't like using squeezy lip balms in an office or when I'm out on the go, because generally what I do is I squeeze an amount on my fingertip and rub it on my lips. That's why this one stays at home for when I get out of the shower. You guys ready to hate me again? Glossier's bag. This is the GlossierBomb.com, specifically the CherryBomb.com. This is not the first bomb.com I've owned. The first one was the birthday cake one and I hated it. Yes, it does smell and taste just like Momofuku Milk Bar's birthday cake, uh, which I love super desperately. But you know what it also has? It has a petrolatum Vaseline undertaste that you cannot divorce from the cake taste. Also, do you see this part of the packaging that's bright red? On the birthdaybomb.com, it's a holographic shimmer that rubs off. You get it all over your hands, and because this doesn't have an applicator, it's just a tube 
you have to use your hands to get it, so then you just end up rubbing the shimmer on your lips because it's on your fingertips. The birthdaybomb.com's sparkle, it was, had a shim it was a clear bomb with a suspended sparkle. It was really sandy and unpleasant, and I don't like that one at all. But this one, everything about that one is bad, does not apply to this one. It is a fun, sheer red shade. It smells and tastes like cherry Twizzlers. I like this a lot. This is also in my work bag every day. We all, we don't, we don't like Glossier. I know. She walked in. We saw, we said, oh, pretty girl, let's hate on her. Last but not least is the newest addition to the Bomb family. This is the ColourPop Lippy Balm in the shade Passion Pit. Figured looking at them on the website that they'd be so sheer that it wouldn't make sense to buy a color that I liked because like it wouldn't really show up. So I just decided to buy this based on the scent and shade name I liked the most which was this one. It's a passion fruit scented bomb, which I think smells like uh, mangoes. And the shade is Passion Pit, and that is a band that I like, so I picked this one. What I don't like about it is you have to use the strength of all the gods of Olympus to get it out the freaking tube, my good says. Like, I'm squeezing very hard, and there she is. But it's not quite a standard gloss. It has a sheen to it, but it's not a gloss. It has a lip balm sheen, but it's very comfortable. I like it a lot. Smell and taste is astoundingly nice. Actually, I was wrong. It's not mango. It's lychee that this tastes like. And it's a pure fruit taste. There's no chemical undertaste to it, which I really appreciate. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna get into my 14 colorful lip glosses. I don't have a problem. I took a very long break to eat some brownies and change hats. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about the extremely diverse color range of my pigments and glasses. Yo, I just found the most wannabe quirky ass clip while I'm editing. Well, watch this, it's so cringy. <laughs> Okay, girl. I'm gonna start with my ColourPop glasses. This bright pink over here is the shade Pony Up, and over here we have the shade Flying Horses. I don't know why I ended up with the two equine themed glasses, but that's just the way, that's just the way the, the hay bailed. <laughs> here's Flying Horses, and here's Pony Up. I love ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lips because they're really comfortable and they are super sheer. And if I haven't made it clear already, I prefer my lip glosses to be very sheer. I do not like an overly pigmented lip gloss. Flying Horses is definitely more neutral than Pony Up. This is an everyday gloss for me, for sure. These are the perfect ratio of thick without having any stick to them. These are absolutely far and away my favorite lip product that ColourPop makes. And then here we have our good sis, Pony Up. If you want the bright pink of Pony Up to come through, you're gonna have to double triple up on layers. It's definitely brighter than Flying Horses. You get a little bit more of that strawberry pink. Hi guys, it's me again. I just found this clip of me adjusting my wig in between shots and it made me laugh. So here, I wanna show you. Okay, so moving the bangs, watch me serve face. Ah, who is she? What? Next up is a gloss that's very special to my heart. I don't wear it very often because it's sentimental. This is the Lorac Lip Luster in the shade Ruby Luster that I got from my best friend Bennett, who I love very dearly. Has a little bit of like an alteration to it. This is not its original lid. This was a lid in an e.l.f. plumping gloss that I took out and screwed into this because this originally had a brush tip applicator and at the time I did not like brush tip applicators. This was several months ago I did this and in that time I have grown to quite like and respect a brush tip applicator for my lip glosses. Also, it does that fun lip gloss magnet thing. Hold on. Yeah, what's that about, man? What the frick? I'm not much of a red gloss person. If I'm gonna wear a red, I'm gonna wear a lipstick, but this is a special gloss because it's sentimental to me. I look like Kristen Ritter. On the topic of altered lip glosses, we've got a couple of those to cover. Listen, you guys know I disrespect the hell out of my makeup. I like to experiment. Our first example of an altered gloss is an example that didn't quite go as well as I wanted it to. This is an edited version of the Wet n Wild Pisces lip gloss from their Zodiac collection. This pearlescent pink, that's the actual color of the gloss. The rest of this is what happened when I mixed a deep dark blackberry colored black radiance gloss with a very thin consistency into this too. As it turns out, there was just no way I was gonna make a very thin slippery lip gloss chock full of blue iridescent glitter work for me. I was a fool. 
and I learned my lesson. Although there's another gloss in there, this consistency is pretty much the same. And I just find it to be too thin. I want something a little goopier, what can I say? <laughs> I don't know what I was anticipating this gloss would do for me by mixing in this dark blackberry color gloss, but it didn't. Uh, and now I only use this to top black or dark gray lipsticks when I want to do something kind of like cyberpunky and like alien and like <laughs> beep boop you know what i'm saying so that's an unfortunate an unfortunate turn of events also the sparkles in it are kind of like sandy like i don't that's why i don't love like a lot of glitter in my glasses however my next example of an altered gloss was quite a positive this lip gloss in my hand right now started out as an ulta beauty shiny sheer gloss in the sage sugar which you can see kind of at the bottom of the tube, was a clear gloss with a lot of pearlescent shimmer in it. Neutral, sheer, pumpkin, spicy brown. That's perfect, like I love that. I wear this a ton. But where did this beautiful orange pigment come from and how did it get in the clear gloss? Well, children, it came from this. This. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the NYX Slip Tease Lip Vinyl in the shade Camel. I unscrewed the cap of this little lady, unscrewed the cap of this little lady, dipped the wand in here once, dipped her back in here, scrolled her around, perfect. This lip gloss is fun. It's a little avant-garde despite being what many would consider to be a fairly like neutral color. DJ, run that back. Many would... It's the one like very pigmented, liquefied lip color type of gloss I have left. But I bought this because it was a color that wasn't really in my collection already and I'll show you how it looks. This is Camel Swatched. Oh my God, I gotta wear this more. Wow, okay, <laughs> that's very nice. Mm, yeah. This is cool. This is definitely not something I'm super comfortable with because I find super pigmented glosses like this are often susceptible to bleeding outside of the lip line, which you can solve with a lip liner or a clear lip liner, but like I hate having to put a lip liner on before my regular lip product, so generally I just deal with it. But for all intents and purposes, this is a very fun gloss to work with. It's very pigmented, no sparkles, which I like. It's very comfortable, it's not too thin, which is amazing. I've definitely dealt with pigmented lip glosses that are too thin. The product doesn't really hug the lip, it just sort of like sits on top of it. And an added benefit of this is that when you blot it, beautiful. Like that's lovely. It's just really genuinely very pretty. Oh, wow. Oh my god, I'm so talented. I want to talk about my two other Ulta shiny sheer glosses. One of them is another altered gloss, but I <laughs> added a clear gloss to it and then another pigmented gloss and wound up making the exact same color and consistency as the original gloss. So I guess what I'm saying is like Ulta, hire me. I'm a chemist. This is the Ulta shiny sheer gloss in the shade Plum. All the shiny shears are great because they are very, very comfortable. And despite the fact that they have shimmer in them, it's a very subtle shimmer. So they come across as just a clear glassy gloss, but they're more creamy than your standard, like clear, like glossy gloss, for example, with no stick. They have a very vague vanilla scent and taste to them, but they're just like a nice, pleasant, inexpensive gloss. If you've ever tried Ulta's house brand, they make really amazing lip glosses. I have the shiny shears and then one other one to talk about. But like, it's great. There's not much to say about it because it's great. I like it. I wear it all the time. The first shade of the shiny shares I bought was this one that's half gone called Cherry. This one's more of a warmer red. It's not mauve and cooler toned like Plums is, but they're so sheer that like, you don't have to pay a ton of attention to the actual shade, you know? You have to try to get something that's gonna look really bad on you. <laughs> Cherry is something I don't wear a ton anymore for a really st silly, stupid reason. I wore it every day at the job I used to have at that middle school that made me want to die. So now I have vague negative memories associated with this gloss, but it's so subtle and so almost clear that I can wear it and then pretend I'm wearing something else that doesn't make me have flashbacks to teaching middle schoolers how to make slime. So, you know, coping mechanisms. My next gloss from Ulta is one of Ulta's Color Rush glosses. This one is the shade Carrie that I did purchase because of Carrie Fisher, but also it's a wonderful color. 
That's our girl, Carrie. This is like a perfect brown berry. It's one drawback is that it's got a doe foot that doesn't pick up a ton of product. So to cover your whole lip, you kind of have to dip in four or five times. It has the special distinction of having my least favorite shaped doe foot ever. Hated chair shape. I, <laughs> they don't hold as much product as paddle shaped doe foots. I don't see the point of them. I don't know why they're so freaking prevalent, especially for liquid lipsticks. I don't get it. Stop making these. This one is my Urban Decay Hi-Fi Lip Gloss in the shade Rapture. Look at that, okay? Paddle shaped, sis. That's what we support in this household. Light, sheer, cooler toned pink. I tend to wear this with smoky eyes. These are so nice and comfortable. I really, really like these. I wish the shade range of these was larger. There's like 20 shades. So like, what am I even talking about? The selection of like brown nudes is not amazing. Urban Decay, you had a good one with this, all right? Expand more. There's your free advice, Wendy. We have three left. This has the distinction of being my least favorite gloss when you intersect formula, comfort, and pigmentation. This is one of Wet n Wild's Mega Slicks glosses in the shade Wind and Dined. <laughs> I'm trying to get like this gloss. <laughs> Wet n Wild likes to do this thing where they give the Mega Slicks glosses the tiniest goddamn applicator in the world that holds one little tiny dew drop of gloss. What am I? Second dip, third dip. My problem with this is that in like rubbing it into my lips just now, it thinned itself out so much that it doesn't feel like a comfortable like gooey saturating gloss anymore, you know? So I always wear it with another gloss on top of it, which is just like an annoying hassle with lip glosses, <laughs> you know? With lipsticks, it's one thing, but with glosses, I want it to feel like comfortable and thick on my lips. And this doesn't really do that. It's a little bit too thin. And also if I were to add as many layers as it would need to like really be like a comfortable thick layer of gloss, one, it would take forever because like I said, that applicator holds like one single like whisper of the heart of gloss. And two, it would be way too dark and way too much overpigmentation because it is a pigmented gloss. So, you know, it's just like not perfect and <laughs> That's not acceptable. Our second to last gloss is the Anastasia lip gloss in the shade Warm Bronze that I have to be honest. I have also altered this one a bit in the sense that I have added a clear gloss to it to sheer it out somewhat because I thought that it was too pigmented when I first got it. This is Warm Bronze. It's not that much more sheer than when you first buy it, but it's a little bit more thinned out because I thought it was a little bit too much. Easy. Although I would definitely say the price of the Anastasia glosses has deterred me from like buying the whole collection of them. We have one lip gloss left. My favorite lip gloss. The lip gloss that I hold above all other lip glosses. And that lip gloss is the buxom full on lip plumping polish in the shade. Brandy. Why? Because there was a lip gloss that I've talked about at some point on my channel. It was a Soap and Glory Sexy Mother Pucker Gloss in the shade Plums Up that I had modified by adding a bunch of like blush to. And I'd made this perfect berry toned neutral gloss for my skin. It was amazing. I almost panned it. I, it was like almost gone when I eventually threw it away because it was super old and <laughs> biologically compromised. Months, not even months, like a year and a half ago, I decided to bring that lip gloss into a Sephora and try my best to dupe it with an existing lip gloss like Sophia does in her makeup science videos. <laughs> and the one that came the closest was this one by Buxom in the shade Brandy. It has this sort of like maple-y scent to it, which like I myself, I'm not Canadian, but like I feel like I know enough Canadian people that it's like, that's alluring to me. <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts, which is basically Canada. So <laughs> oh, yes, so comfortable. The glitter is like so enough that it's not abrasive or sandy. I hate sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. It gets everywhere. Ugh, it's sheer enough that it does, it's not like an overpowering color, but it's enough color that you can tell that it's there. It's just like everything that I want in a lip gloss. I'm in love with these. They were recently on sale at Ulta, which is why I bought it. This is my favorite lip gloss of all time. Of all time! My God, this is taking me about two and a half hours to do. This is probably the most boring video on the freaking planet. Before you leave, I'm gonna need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me, that would be very pigmented. And if you'd like to engage with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter 
at Denise Pisa, and I have a second channel called Extra Denise Pisa that I will link in the description where I post music and covers sometimes. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to use code NISA at checkout for 10% off. Not anywhere in particular, just try it everywhere. See what happens. Bye! You like my hair? Two things. Just bite it. Yeah.